Hello everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to The Book Refuge and welcome to another weekly reading wrap up where I go over with you every book that I read during the week. Um, this week I think we have um, 13 books to talk about which is really awesome. I had a really good week with everything. Ooh, that's my computer. Uh, because first off, we need to start with some channel members. We had a lot of new channel members this week, and so I want to give them all a shout out just real quick here. So first we have Diana Z, who joined at the Faded Friend level. We have uh, Mirja F, who joined at the Sassy Supporter level. We have Panini Prest, who joined at the Sassy Supporter level. And we have Alexis McDonnell, McDowell, sorry, McDowell, who joined at the Romantic Renegade level. So thank you all so much for joining the Book Refuge. It really means so much to me that you support what I do here. Um, anyone who would like to look into that, there is always a link in my description box, as well as if you're watching on YouTube, you can just check out the little button that says um, channel members. What you get access to is you get access to my videos early if you're at certain levels. You get access to um, specific channels in my Discord server. And then um, other levels have different benefits. And um, they're all for a pretty small amount. I want to keep it really reasonable. But it just means that you support what I do here. And it helps me keep kind of a steady income coming from YouTube. Because we never know what YouTube is going to do. So, alright. Enough of that. Thank you all so much. Y'all, I just love you. But let's get into what you're really here for. Um, week 20 of 2021. And we got some books to talk about. So let's get going. So last week, I had done a like weekly reading vlog, well, a weekend reading vlog, and I read a couple of awesome books. So let's kind of go over those to start with in more detail. Um, if you want to check out that vlog, I will link it up there and you can check that out. Um, but I definitely talk more in detail about them there. So I read In Love with a, w with a Wicked Man by Liz Carlisle. Here's some step back action right here. This book was a TBR pick, actually, to read a book with a red dress on the cover. Um, which is funny because I made that prompt because I have quite a few books with red dresses and... I just thought it would be fun to kind of go based on some of the covers of my historicals. But anyway, this one is about Kate, who is actually um, a lady. She is a, a countess in her own right. She is actually part of a title that the women can actually hold the title, which is really cool because she doesn't have to get married to have what she has. Um, but everything that she owns is entitled. So even if she married someone, that person couldn't like take it away from her, which is really cool because it means she can marry for love. However, the land and the house like is really kind of run down when she gets a hold of it. And so she spent the last few years really building everything back up to the point where the land could actually make some money. So she is actually a pretty desirable spinster because though that person wouldn't get control of her land, I mean, they, they would still have access to whatever like money she has coming in that she made happen. So Anyway, but what happens is she is going for a ride and there ends up being an accident when this guy who is on horseback has to swerve to avoid her and he ends up bucked off his horse and he has temporary memory loss. Um, so we don't know who this guy is. He has a few clues on his body about who he is, um, but it turns out that he is Lord Edward Quartermain who owns a gambling hell. And the reason he's in the area is that he recently acquired an estate next door to her through like a gambling debt. Someone owed him something and he got it from them. And so we don't know about his past and, and present when he first meets Kate. And so while he is convalescing at her home, certain parts of his past start to come back to him. And he knows that he's not a good guy, but he's feeling very drawn to Kate. Kate really has nothing to lose by having an affair with him and she feels like that is something that she might want to do. And so there definitely are some conflicts to them, but something that I really enjoyed about this book, which I didn't expect, is that it kind of has like a reverse mistress tropes. Like she is asking him to be her lover um, instead of like a guy asking a woman to be his mistress. And one of the things I like about it, because the main reason that I don't like a mistress trope when like a duke or an earl is asking a woman to be his mistress is that 
he holds all the power and he can walk away from that woman whenever he wants and she's the one who will bear the brunt of it. But in this case, they're really both free to do what they would please and so um, it just makes for a really beautiful relationship in my opinion. Um, I give this four stars. It was kind of slow in bits and there is a villain in this story that I feel like wasn't necessary. I feel like there was enough like internal conflict between what Edward's life is and what Kate's life is that we didn't need that extra added but I really enjoyed it and I'm definitely going to read more by Liz Carlisle because she's a new author that I definitely want to give more of my time to. Then I read Ivan by Sophie Lark. I started her Underworld series. This one is about a Bratvava, a brat the boss and a female assassin who gets sent to take him out sorry the lighting in the morning um and he ends up catching her and instead of killing her he ties her in his dungeon he's actually not that cruel to her he decides to uh torture her with orgasms <laughs> and she doesn't really have any loyalty to the person who set her up to this so she's like i really don't know anything about the person who commissioned me to kill you because that's not how it works for me like I purposely don't know the name of the people who who asked me to do it but I will tell you what I know um, and then he just feels inexplicably drawn to her and she feels drawn to him this is a pretty quick book I gave it four stars I loved this like undeniable tug between the two of them and the mafia story was actually really cool as well then I read billionaire boss next door by Max Monroe and I didn't really enjoy this one. I listened to it on any play. <sighs> I don't know if it was just a really hard downshift from reading like Mafia in a very like intense story to reading this. But this was a hate to love office romance. This girl makes a bad impression on this guy and then it turns out he's her boss. And it's a very strong hate to love. And I just felt like the venom that they had for each other was more than was necessary and then they had the hookup which you know always happens in a romance and then they were separated like almost immediately like they are literally together for three chapters of this book and it doesn't happen until 70% into the book and then they're apart or they're together for three chapters having a bunch of sex and then there's a time jump so again see more of that in my vlog when I read this but I was just like this was a miss for me. I usually love Max Monroe, the work that they do, but this one just did not hit right at all. Then I read Snow by Sophie Lark. This is the next book in the Underworld series. Um, Sophie, the author herself, actually, when she saw I was starting this series, she knows that I like read her books and fucking love them. She was like, make sure you read Snow before Bully comes out. Um, Bully comes out in June, which is the next book in the Kingmaker, because she's like, you will see some of those characters in that book. So I was like, yes, okay, I'm ready. This one is an underground fighter. Um, so it's an underground fighter who is there is a, a competition that the mafia is doing that has a really big payout so he is competing in it and then it has a girl who her father has gotten in debt to the Petrov I think it's the Petrov Bratva and she has just gotten back from medical school and so in exchange for her father's debt she agrees to 20 years indentured servitude to Petrov and so she gets assigned to be the doctor at um at this competition and so she ends up meeting snow there and so it's definitely a forbidden romance because how are they going to be together with the mafia causing problems for them the lighting's never happened so i actually gave this one five stars i thought it was absolutely brilliant and i can't wait to read more in this series sophie lark just she does it for me then i read malice by coralie june this is a reverse harem mafia book. Um, this girl, I can't remember her first name, um, she's best friends with a mafia princess, only she doesn't know that her friend is a mafia princess. Um, this friend comes to visit her when she's working her shift at a restaurant, and they've been friends for three years, and she never asks questions about who she is. That's part of the rules. Don't ask questions about who I am, and we can be friends. Well, her brother, who is the head of the mafia he finds out 
and he shows up and he thinks that this girl is a spy because lately there has been some shady dealings happening in his mafia and he thinks that this girl could be it and so he takes her, he kidnaps her, and he decides to put her through a test. And this is a test that really reminds me of Matteo Moretti, or Matteo, I can't remember his last name, from a Sam Mariano book, this test that he makes her do. Um, and when she does this test, she is more fully entrenched in the mafia than ever, so he keeps her around. And then her friend ends up being, like, sent away to Europe as, like, punishment, and now this girl is just stuck in the mafia. And so the capo and two of the brothers are now kind of obsessed with her and this starts a reverse harem situation it was very interesting because it's very clear that like obviously there are no swords crossing in this and it becomes a shared situation it really is just like we all whoever has the time to spend with her gets to spend the time with her but it's very clear that malice the head of the mafia gets to choose who gets to spend time with her and who doesn't. So it's a very interesting setup. Um, I ended up giving this four stars. I thought it was pretty unique. Um, this definitely is a book that could use another book because it really wrapped up rather rushedly, hurriedly, and I, it definitely could use more. But I was intrigued by it and I have read one Coralie June before and I want to read some more of them. So I gave it four stars. Okay. Then I read Flock by Kate Stewart. And now it's time to get controversial, right? But that's okay. I don't mind it at all. And I didn't hate this book. I didn't hate this book. I buddy read this book with Brie from In Love and Words. Brie, I love you. Thank you so much for buddy reading with me. We were supposed to buddy read this in April, but Brie and I both really like audiobooks. And the audiobook came out just like last week. And so we agreed to read it together now that the audio was out. Actually, I think it came out on like Monday or Tuesday or whatever. Um... Okay, so this book is super popular, especially for the TikTok crowd, um, and I've seen some of my friends read it recently, and here's the thing. I get the hype. I absolutely understand it. The thing was, two things. One, I myself bought into said hype. I was too pumped for this book. I was excited for it. I had seen some of my friends read it, and they loved it, and so I was like, oh, this is going to be good. This is going to be good. Um, number one, there's like some big secrets about this book that everyone was like, don't hear anything about it ahead of time. But I heard, I heard that there was possibly some elements to this story that I would like. And I think the issue is that number one, this definitely skews towards new adult, which is okay. Um, the, one of the heroes, yeah, I just said it, one of the heroes is very hippie, and I think he's supposed to seem wise beyond his years, but a lot of it just sounded like bullshit to me, and if our heroine hadn't been 19, I feel like she would have laughed at a lot of the stuff that he said, but it seemed so, like, wise and spiritual because he was a couple years older than her. Sorry, I jumped right into what I don't like about this book. If you want a summary of this book, um, this girl, her parents haven't been together. She wants to go to college. Her father works in this town where, where he owns a lot of the town. And so he says, if you come and spend one year in the town working at my factory and working for me, you'll get your inheritance and she'll be able to go to college. There we go. That's the setup. Her and her dad do not get along. She doesn't want to be around him, but she does it. So she ends up having to work at this factory and she meets this guy who is like her foreman technically. Um, and he's very like, don't be around technology, just let things be what they'll be, very free love, very, um, the world is fleeting, just live what you want for the now. Um, which I understand, and living in the moment is, is one thing, like, I think it's great. I feel like the way the hero described it he was kind of looking down on people who plan for the future. Um, and I'm just kind of like, well, don't shit on people who like to be prepared and be secure just because you like to live a hippie lifestyle, right? Um, and it just felt very like he thought he knew all the answers to life. I don't know. Mm. 
And then that element that everyone is so like hyped about comes into play. And here's the thing, y'all. I'll put up a spoiler tag now. I'll, I'm putting up the spoiler tag because I got to actually tell you what I don't like about this so people know. This has an MFM element where our heroine starts hearing from people in town that this group of friends, there's four friends, that they have shared women before. And she hears about it. She's like, oh, what's that like? Oh, my God. And so I'm thinking, oh, cool. We're going to have some polyamory in here. And then when our hero brings it up, the heroine is just like, oh, I can never do that. And then our other hero, who starts really flirting with her and making her be more attracted to him. She just feels so guilty, even though they're like, you can like both of us. You can fuck both of us. It's totally fine with us. She just feels so much guilt about it. And they're just very like, do you feel guilty about it because you actually feel guilty? Or does the world make you feel guilty about it? And like, I understand that perspective. Here's the thing, guys. The reason why this book doesn't like light me up and get me excited I've been reading fucking Katie Roberts for the last three years. I've been reading Minaj. I've read Reverse Harem. I've read fucking in every way that you can do it. And so this book is nothing new to me. It's nothing that, like if I had read this book at 18 or even at the very beginning of my journey into like polyamorous stuff, I would have been like, wow, this is so great. And so that's why like, I don't want to completely smash this. I know I'm getting passionate about it. Well, number one, I don't want to smash anything. Um, <laughs> I laugh. I have some books to smash on later in this, so that's funny. But particularly, like, this book is is well-written. It has great suspense because there is something else going on in the plot that is an undercurrent that the heroes are not telling her about. And it's very, like, we can't tell you about it. Um... And that thing just went on a little too long for me. Like it was there pretty much from the beginning and then it just was there. And then there is a very abrupt cliffhanger in this story. And I just don't have a desire to read any more in the series. Like I had some people tell me more about what happens and I'm glad that I'm not going to continue because this isn't, this isn't the series for me, but I see the place that it has with people who just liked it. Like I, I get why they liked it. And I just want very specific things from a book when they have MMF or MFM or multiple people. And I haven't been getting them what I want lately, but I will find it and I'll share it with you when I do. So this was three stars for me. And I just, I have to put it at that because my enjoyment level was not where I would want it to be. And then I just felt like it was pretty pretentious. And then I felt like I've read it done better before. But I get why it hit some people the way that it did and made them obsessed with it. Because if I'd read this even three years ago, I would have gobbled it up. But I'm just, I'm past that point now. And so it was just like, oh, is that all? <laughs> I was like, is, is that all? <laughs> So I'm sorry. It didn't work for me. It didn't work. Then I read Siren by Murata Eros. And I gave it two stars. And I don't know what the fuck was happening. This was supposed to be a reverse harem like vampire siren monster. There was so much rape in this. Like so much rape of magical creatures and non-consensual things. Um, there definitely was some magical penises. But I don't even know what the plot was besides rape. So I'm going to leave it at that and move along. Then I read Once Upon a Christmas Eve by Elizabeth Hoyt. This is book, uh, this is a 12.5. I'm not sure where this one fits, but this is about, um, Adam, Lord Dark, I think. I don't know, but it's Lord Dark. And he's a character that's from more at the beginning of Maiden Lane. Um, he causes some problems for Winter. Um, but I, I knew that he was like a good heart somewhere. And so I was actually expecting him to have a full book, but he didn't. Um, and so this little novella is about him and his grandma are traveling on Christmas Eve. Way to make a hero like sympathetic that quick 
and they have a problem and they happen to be just a couple miles from the Sinjin household. So that's Godric and Meg's and then Godric has two sisters and one of his sisters is unmarried and her name is Sarah and this is about Sarah and uh, Lord Dark and the interactions they have on Christmas Eve. Um, this book does have trigger warnings for some trauma because Sarah was assaulted at a point in her past and we kind of worked through that. Um, but I, I really enjoyed this. I gave it four stars. Then I read Not the Duke's Darling by Elizabeth Hoyt. This is book one in the Grey Court series, which they say is like a spinoff from Maiden Lane. I didn't see how it connects to Maiden Lane. Maybe it will in future books. But this one is about Freya de Moray, who is a part of the Wise Women. Um, she is the daughter of disgraced nobility, and she is being a chaperone under an assumed name. Um, and she runs across the Duke of Harlow, who's the man who destroyed her family. And she kind of takes a side route from her mission because she wants to punish him for what he did to her family. But she doesn't know all the things that Christopher, Duke of Harlow, has lived through. And he's just so happy to see her again. And he has all these feelings coming back up. And he doesn't understand where her level of like hatred for him is coming from. And I think it's all very interesting like oh it's so interesting um I ended up giving that I rated this a four star I feel like it's more like a four and a half um it's just that it took me a while to read and usually that's a sign of not like loving it as much also this much of it is an epilogue that belongs to Grace Burroughs not an epilogue a um short story that belongs to Grace Burroughs and so I was kind of disappointed that it was this um I'm very interested in this like group of wise women. Their mission is actually there's this woman who it's been said that she's dead, but her 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 husband actually put out that she died and he's been keeping her trapped in the dungeon, basically like keeping her captive. Um, I think to like keep a hold of her money. I'm not sure. And so Freya is there to save her, but she keeps getting distracted by Christopher. I loved Christopher. He is a traumatized hero. Um, he went through some horrible things when he was overseas. His wife actually died there. Um, and he has a stress animal. So he has a dog named Tess who actually helps him when he has like PTSD episodes. Yeah, this is definitely more four and a half star than a four. I just, I didn't love it as much as some other Elizabeth Hoyts that I'd read. So that's why I didn't give it five stars. Crystal, if you're watching this, that's why I didn't give it five stars. I didn't feel the same way that I felt about some other Elizabeth Hoyts that I've read. But it was still really good. The heroine is so badass. She challenges the hero to a duel at one point in this book. And she's good. And it was really, really great book. I can't wait to read um, the next one in this series. And I just never want to be done with Elizabeth Hoyt. I still have one of her series to read. And I'm like saving it because I don't want to be done with her books. All right. Yay. Then I read After Midnight by Teresa Medeiros. I read this for the Rake Appreciation Society. You can go ahead and check out my live show on Crystal's Bookish Life. I will try to remember to link that up here where we talk about this book. This is a paranormal historical romance. This is about um, Caroline Cabot, who her younger sister, Vivian, is kind of being pursued by Adrian Kane, who is the Viscount Trevelyan, and it is rumored that he is a vampire. And when he invites Vivian and her sisters, including Caroline, to come and stay at his estate so they can get to know each other better, Caroline decides that she is going to get to the bottom of this. Is he a vampire? Is he going to be a danger to her sister? Why do we never see him during the daylight? Why are all the mirrors in his home covered with cloth? What is going on? She is going to find out because if she is going to trust her sister to this man, she needs to know what's going on. Of course, Adrian starts to just be completely enamored with Caroline instead of with Vivian. Vivian was going to be a convenient wife to kind of be a cover for him and what's going on in his life. And Caroline just won't keep her damn nose out of anything. So this book was very fun. I ended up giving it three and a half stars. I did love it. The issues for me were a couple. Number one, 
it took a long time for the story to get going and there was no audiobook for this book so I had to read it physically and it was tough to get into. Once the story got rolling and some of the secrets started coming out we got to see what the more of the plot was going this was a lot of fun. There was some great steamy times in here. However the, the, the writing was very flowery it was pretty campy. I'm not saying that necessarily is a detriment I just I didn't have like the deep feelings that I wanted, um, but it was really fun. And without like spoiling the book for you, there definitely is a paranormal element to this. But part of the fun of this book is finding out what that par paranormal element is and like how much it has to do with the story. Um, so I don't want to spoil that aspect because that really does make the fun of it is you're like, is he, isn't he, what's going on? Like what's going on? Um, but it was really fun. This was a great ride. I had a great time. Um, so even though it was a three and a half star, like it just goes to show that does not mean a book is bad. There was lots of people who gave this four and even some five stars who read this in rank appreciation. So definitely check out our live. So it's only about like 45 minutes long and we definitely talk more in depth about the heroes in this book and what a future book in this series might look like. So there's that. Then I DNF'd Cocky Chef by J.D. Hawkins. So this really just came down to a mood that I was in. I may pick this book up again sometime. This was a TBR pick for May where every month now I try to pick five books that are Kindle owned books. And um, this was one of the ones that I've, I got when it was free. I don't know if it is still free, but it is, you know, it's an office place romance where the office is a kitchen. We have a chef who is a little bit of like a hot young Gordon Ramsay who like owns a lot of places and he's trying to um, get a new restaurant up and he meets his like new chef and she makes a really bad impression on him and he decides to give her a second chance um, and they have a lot of chemistry between them. He's just, I'm not seeing his like endearing side enough. And at the time I just was in the middle of other books that I wanted to be reading instead. And so I kind of gave this one a kick to the curb and I was like, I'll get back to it later on. Um, so I may pick this one back up, but for now I'm just giving it a DNF without um, rating it or anything because I made it to the 40% mark and that alone took me like three days to do. And y'all know me, it should not take me that long if I'm enjoying myself. Then we had kind of a break from our regularly scheduled programming and I read Blade of Secrets by Trisha Levenseller. So I say this to my friends, um, well, and to you guys, I don't read a lot of YA fantasy anymore. I still own a lot of it, like down below my historicals that is like all YA fantasy because I'm a sucker for the covers and I always think that I'm gonna be in the mood for a YA fantasy, so I buy them. This is the case of, I love Trisha Levenseller and I love her fantasy romances and when I saw this one on um, NatGalley, I decided to go for it because I usually get approved for Trisha Levenseller arcs, the last three books I have. And I really love The Shadow Between Us and so I decided to try this one. And the thing is, is I ended up not being in the mood for it until it was already like coming out. So this book is already out. And it ended up being on any play to listen to it on audio. So I was like, well, perfect. I will listen to the book and I'll get my review written still so that I don't have to say on NetGalley that I didn't read it. So I listened to this book. Great narration, by the way. One of my favorite narrators who does fantasy. Um, and this is about a heroine named Ziva, which I love that name. Reminds me of NCIS. Ziva is one of my favorites. And she is a bladesmith or a blacksmith, basically. And she makes magical weapons. She's six foot tall, super muscular and strong because of her profession. And she also has crippling social anxiety. So she and her sister are orphans. Her parents were, were killed when they were very young and she ended up being raised by a blacksmith who taught them the trade. And so she has a younger sister who does a lot of her social engagement engaging for her. So she takes commissions for magical weapons. Um, she's able to like, when she is creating the weapon, she's able to like imbue her magic into it. She can't always decide what the weapon will do, but people will commission them anyway. And then she will just see what comes out of her and she's made some really amazing weapons. Um, and so one day she ends up getting a commission from this warlord who asked her to make a sword and it's like, just see what happens. So she ends up making this sword and while she's making the sword, she sees someone walk by outside 
and it's a man and he's six foot five and he has red hair and he's beautiful and for the first time she starts to feel a little attraction and she does, sees this while she's making the sword and she says out loud something about like how beautiful he is or wanting to touch him from far away she's like I've never felt like I wanted to touch him. and so she's like wow really want to touch him <laughs> like she's saying that and the sword starts to glow and then when she goes to hit it next her hammer bounces off and so the sword has been imbued with the power of like it can defend anything and then she discovers when she goes to test it out that it has far reaching abilities so when she goes to chop a tree she goes to like cut into the tree when she's still this far away from it she like swings and it chops from her not even touching it so it has like far reaching abilities and it's amazing and so she the warlord comes to pick it up and when the warlord is testing it out she's like testing the blade and she cuts herself on it and when the warrior the warlord who's a woman by the way it's a bad it's bad woman <laughs> hands her the sword ziva can hear the warlord's thoughts and the warlord is thinking about taking over the world she's like this sword in the hand like I'll be able to destroy my enemies and take over the world and Ziva's like what the fuck is happening um so she makes an excuse and the warlord leaves and says they're going to be back later and she tells her sister what happened and they discover that because she was whispering secrets to the sword about how beautiful that man was the blade is now imbued with if it cuts the person it can hear their innermost secrets and so she tells her sister, this warlord is planning destruction. We cannot let it get hands. However, they're not able to destroy the sword because now it, it is impenetrable. So it has far reaching abilities. It cannot be destroyed and it can tell people secrets. So they decide they have to run and they end up hiring a mercenary to help them. And it ends up, of course, being that beautiful man that she saw. And then there's also a scholar named Petrick who is trying to learn about magic and all of its wonderful things and he decides to join them as well. So this ends up being a road trip story. Um, there are lots of foibles and things that happen to them along the way. And this is part one. So it did have a cliffhanger. This is part one in the Bladesmith series. But for a YA fantasy, it kept me very engaged. There is a very slow burn romance with only some kissing in it. <laughs> but Trisha Levenseller, is so good and the thing is too there wasn't a way that this story could rush the romance because we were on the run for our lives and our heroine is extremely antisocial and it's hard for her to talk to anyone and so though she's extremely attracted to this guy literally built a powerful sword based on her unrequited attraction for him it's not going to be a quick thing but if you love YA fantasy I think you'll really enjoy this. I like the anxiety rep that was in here and how it was described and like the tongue tiedness that comes up and everything. It was amazing. And I loved reading about a heroine who isn't the typical like petite, like this, I'm almost six foot tall. I'm a pretty muscular person. Like it was fun to read about that and her not being delicate and fragile. So I gave this four stars. I really, really liked it. I'm excited to read the next one in the series and I love Trisha Levenseller. Then I read a upcoming release I'm very excited for. Um, this was by an author I'd never heard of before, and she actually reached out to me. I believe her name was Cassandra, and her author name for this is Kay Dossel. The book is called A Bullet Between Us, and I'm so excited about it. This is a mafia book. Look at this cover. It's just fantastic. And so I was reached out to to read an arc for this and I'm finally starting to get reached out to by authors reading books that I actually like. I know that sounds bad, but I still get people asking me to read sci-fi and fantasy books. I'm like, is the romance heavy? And they're like, well, there's a romance in it. I'm like, I'm sorry. Like, I'm not going to read your book if there's no fucking in it. I'm sorry. I'm not. Um, but I've been reached out to by a lot more authors lately who actually have romances for me to read. I'm telling you authors your book isn't too smutty for me. Give it to me. Let me like it. Let me talk about it. I want to. So anyway, this book is about Davina and Elias. And at the beginning of the book, Davina sees something she shouldn't see. And 
she ends up on the run from, I believe it's from the New York Mafia, I think. And she ends up on the run and she gets given this number of a detective who will take care of her and she doesn't know what makes this person special or how they will protect her but she doesn't have any options and so she's able to take a bus and make her way to this police officer and he sets her up with a protective detail and one of these people who gets set up to protect her his name is Elias now Elias actually has mafia connections as well not the same mafia as the mafia who's after her but he is actually part of a like brothers by deeds, not by blood. And his capo, Luca, has set up his brothers in positions of power in the government or like in police force, which was very clever. Instead of just buying people off, which if you buy someone off, someone else can buy them off for more money. He actually has family members they consider each other family. So he actually has family members in this position. So Luca is a police officer. Um, and then he has a brother who's a DE, who's in the DEA and they have them spread out in other places. So he gets assigned to take care of this girl. Doesn't know that it has anything to do with mafia ties or whatever, but his police chief assigns him to protect her. And he realizes this woman is traumatized. She's not taking care of herself. She's starving herself, like all these things because she's terrified to leave. And so our hero, he actually trains Dobermans, which my family raises Dobermans, so I was like, yay! And so he, knowing how frightened she is of him and of everything, he introduced her to Boris, his dog, and gives her something to, like, to help her sleep. And so she's never, like, met a dog before, so she's really scared. And he's like, have you ever been bitten by a dog? And she's like, no. Have you ever been scared by a dog? And she's like, no. And he's like, then why are you scared? Like, Boris isn't going to hurt you. He's going to protect you. And so he, like, lets, like, when he is watching her for the day, he'll, like, drop off Boris, like, doggy daycare. <laughs> and she grows really attached to Boris. And eventually he's like, I think you need Boris to, like, stay with you at night. And so Boris will, like, sleep by her and keep her safe. And I but obviously, I don't want to tell you too much about this book. This book isn't out yet. Obviously, these secrets are going to come out and it's going to be a conflict of interest because he is part of a mafia and that mafia is going to have issues with things. Like, I don't want to spoil it because this one isn't even out yet. This book comes out May 24th. I don't know. I'll put up the date, but I really loved it. Please help out this author. This is her first, I believe, adult dark romance. I think she had college romances before. Please go pre-order this book if you're interested in it. It will really help her out, and I love this book. I want to read more. The next book is supposed to be about the capo, Luca, and it's called A War Around Us, and I really want that book to get made and out. So, Please, please, please go pre-order this if you, if this sounds interesting, all my mafia lovers. But this author was so sweet and I really want to reward her and show her the power of having Jen at the Book Refuge like her book. So don't let me down. Go, go pre-order this or put this on some lists. Check it out. And then the last book I read this week was To Love a Duchess by Karen Rainey. And like, I love this. Sometimes hardcovers don't do justice, but just look at this. Also, I didn't read it this way, but like, look at the color of this one. Look at this coral, like sunset color. Ugh, this book is so pretty. This was my first Karen Rainey. Um, I own a lot of her books because a lot of them are Scottish and I love it. This is the first book in an all for love series. I did purchase the next two after I read this because I wanted it. This book I listened to on any play, and this was a prompt for read a book about a duchess. So this one was To Love a Duchess, and I'm I'm so happy I read this. This was a really quick read for me, um, and it was so interesting. So this is about, let me see her name. This is about um, Suzanne, who is the um, widow duchess of Marsley, Marsley and she has just been in a fog for two years because the same day that her husband died, her young son died too. And she didn't have much else that she was like, 
had going for her but her son because her husband he cheated on her all the time he wasn't a great spouse but she didn't mind because she had her son and that's what she wanted and so she has just been drowning in grief and her father still likes to use her for his political gains he likes to tout out his daughter who's a duchess and he doesn't really care that she is wallowing in grief so at the beginning of this book we have adam drummond who is a spy and he has become her major domo which is like the head of house the butler whatever um and he is undercover and he sees her one night. She got drunk at one of the parties her father makes her go to. And she actually tries to kill herself. She isn't super serious about this. But between her being drunk and we find out pretty soon on that she's being drugged by her lady's maid to keep her docile. Like that mixed with the alcohol made her try to kill herself. And so Adam saves her. And now he he's there to kind of search through the deceased duke's um information because he's trying to prove that this duke was a traitor um and caused some problems and now he's paying attention to suzanne and he feels very drawn to her he wants to know more about her and that is not what he's there for that is not the mission that he's supposed to do but he can't help himself because she just seems so sad and so beautiful and lonely and he just keeps being drawn to her and this book was really beautiful. It was soft and quiet and it dealt with grief in different ways. Like, um, he is also a widow. He wasn't super in love with his wife. It was a marriage of convenience, but he still cared about her and they kind of talk through those things together, but it's done in a way like this isn't super heavy, but you know, I've just mentioned the trigger warnings basically in describing it. This is a trigger warning for loss of a child, for loss of spouse, and then for attempted suicide right in the beginning. Um, and yeah, it, it was just, it was very powerful. Um, I ended up giving this like four, four and a half stars just because there was a lot of like a lull in the story but overall it was just this really like there's mutual pining between the two of them and i really love how it all worked out in the end um and her decisions and his decisions and the decisions they make together <laughs> so this was just very sweet i can't wait to meet more karen rainey i didn't know what to expect and i love trying new authors and Ah, it just made me smile like it was beautiful so there you go those are the books that I read this week let me know which ones you have read um, or let me know what you read this week and what your favorite was so thank you so much for watching thank you to my new channel members it means so much to me make sure to check your name out in the credits um, and thank you to everyone who supports me all the time it means so much have a great day everyone bye <laughs>